Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at. Today is February 2nd, 2023. Nice. Traditional to digital. Actually, I need to change this uh, header here, because it's not traditional to digital anymore. It's a combination of both, so traditional and digital. I like to do traditional plus digital. I like the combination rather than the transition from one to the other. So today is day 50. Yay, day 50. Look at this, guys. This is the Gumroad resources, and today day 50 is uploading soon, but I finished uh, yesterday uploading all of the resources for the past 50 days. It's not just this tiger painting. It's all about learning Krita, thumbnail composition, sketchings and brushes, uh, curriculum outlines, uh, the design process, all, all kinds of things. Uh, tons of learning on composition, just fantastic um, information. And then, heck, in, in 15 is when we started the soup to nuts with this painting. And boy, the, this meal of a painting is taking a long time. Yeah. So, traditional to digital, see the link in the description below. $10, and if you wait till the end, you get a discount code. And <laughs> I mention it on most streams anyway, so hopefully this content is uh, valuable to you in some way that I'm providing. And if it's not, let me know. I'll make a change. I'm here to help. Okay. We're gonna get to it, just like we have been. We got to it yesterday really fast. Uh, really hitting it hard with um, and actually I'm going to delete this guy no I'm going to keep him here um, we moved f uh, a lot further really quickly yesterday on the tiger body which was great and I think this was the layer that oh I guess I wasn't working on yeah, I was just working directly on the one tiger layer. Getting used to uh, just working on one layer is, is nice. Heck, that's, you know, what we do in a traditional. Hey, good morning, my friend thinker. Yeah, you showed up so much, it's time for the friend status. <laughs> All right. Uh, the one thing I've been pushing myself to do as well is to move faster on this, uh, to be more efficient, to leverage this, you know, uh, all the digital tools that I can to do enough and not going for perfection. Uh, I always say, I've been saying a lot recently, I, I could just continue to mess with this for days and days, but not anymore. What I want to do right now is I'm going to bring over this reference down here next to the, the pause of the tagger. Pause, pause. It's like you hit pause on the player or there's pause on a cat. And we're going to go to our full screen mode because I think I'm going to stay... No. Yeah. Because I, I, I have my... Yeah, the two, the two brushes that I want to use I have set up there so I can go to my full screen with picker only mode. And what I'm going to do is get all of this awesome color and everything pulled down into this area, these these paws here. And it's gonna get uh, a bit darker because we're not using, you know, we're using a different coloration. Um, all the light is coming from above. I want these to get darker um, than what, what we see here, definitely. But I wanna get the shape and everything in there first. So let's pick a nice orange and let's focus on going dark to light first. Maybe a little bit larger brush, maybe not. I'm just looking at, I'm actually gonna take directly from the coloration I see uh, with our reference image here. And I'm trying to also see, you know, where the hairs go, you know, what direction and trying to 
match that in some way. There's going to be a build-up, as we'll be doing. We we have been doing for a while is um, building up the the colors from dark to light in a lot of this. Don't have to do it always, but with this painting, I, I felt like it's been helping a lot. And that doesn't look right. No, I didn't. That's not the correct line. right here and that goes back we need to get a good shadow set up a cast shadow on the rock as well, but that was, that could be done later. Because this is, our tiger is all in one layer now. All of that effort that we've put into the tiger is now transferred to just one layer. So this is really interesting, something I just thought of because I had to pause there for a second. Pause, <laughs> as I'm working on the pause. Wow. I had to pause there a second, and actually I have two screens set up. One is above my tablet. My tablet's uh, sitting directly on my desk, and the other screen is lifted up on some art books. <laughs> uh, and I had to close a window up there because it was really bright, and it's very dark in my room right now not super dark but it's dark and that bright light from the other window open was making it hard for me to see all of these dark colors um, the, the, you'll find that the same is true when you're working on your painting and it, it took me years to notice a lot of this because What'll happen is you're working on a painting, a traditional painting or whatever, and you you can't get the coloration right, you can't get the values right, you know, just something like it's hard to see and you you can't tell why. A lot of times you just have to sit there and just look. Look at your not just the painting, but your entire surroundings, and you'll find, oh, there's a really bright light on behind my painting or next to me that is casting you know this kind of glow over everything and really preventing me from seeing uh, what i should be seeing and then you you know you turn off your lights um, or you change your lighting setup in some way that's more important than you would think honestly it's really interesting how important that is So before you ever start a painting, just recognize that your surroundings will help you um, successfully create that painting or it can be detrimental to it. That's one of the hardest things about landscape painting is, you know, you, you, you try and set your canvas up in a certain location where you have the best light on it, you don't have any glare, and there's, um, you know, n nothing super bright behind your canvas that is gonna create this uh, crazy lighting scenario where you can't uh, see the values and what you're trying to paint. The best landscape painters, they go out, a, they go out at certain times during the day, and they don't go out, out at, at different, at any times different than that because they know that, well, the lighting is not gonna be any good. It's just gonna create a really bad painting because you can't see anything right. So yeah, be aware of your surroundings. It's more important than you think. 
especially um, when you're working on a tablet or a screen, a mobile screen, you know, maybe you're on a iPad or an Android tablet, you know, something like that. Don't set up with a window behind you. Do you have glare on your screen right now? You know, I, I recently changed up my studio and I had a light right behind me. And as soon as I sat down, I said, nope, that's not going to happen. Because I had this huge amount of glare all over my screen. Um, yeah, you can't have that. It will destroy any kind of judgment you have on things. Even when I paint, I use a vertical palette, uh, which you'll see when I get when I get into the painting of this, because I'll go over all the materials and all that kind of stuff. But um, having a vertical palette, a palette that is at the same orientation uh, as your painting or close to it is going to get you closer to being able to judge color and value as well. Why is that? Because the same exact angle of light is on your palette as is on your painting. Makes a world of difference. It really does. I'm getting kind of like the general shape of these paws in there. And what's probably going to happen is I'll come back in with some overlay layers and darken or lighten up. I have to remember that the one overlay layer that we have right now for this tiger, I cannot merge. It doesn't want to merge right. I wonder if Photoshop has that same issue. I, I'm honestly not worrying too much about these, the paws here. Um, I care about them in the sense that I don't want them to be distracting to the painting. But they are one of the least important aspects of this painting. They need to be accurate, uh, generalized, not specific and part of the background, not distracting. You know, the, the more I do on, on digital, the, the more I create a process. And honestly, you know, if I think about my history with oil painting, the same is true there. The more you work on this, the more you'll create your own process. So for example, I was just thinking, you know, kind of what am I doing right now? And this is part of a process we've, that I've created just through this painting alone um, on this fur, which is I'm throwing in kind of value ranges on everything. You know, getting these hairs kind of lined up and figured out and, and some form or fashion, right? Focusing on value mainly. And then after that, I'm going to bring in some, um, some intense coloration. And 
and then maybe blur it out a bit, then work on details, you know, at, at that point. The lesson from that is basically, you know, keep working, you'll develop a process. Just keep working. Have you now merged all the relevant layers of the tiger? Will you ever be able to merge the overlay layer? I, well, that's a good question. I have no idea. I guess I can try it later. I, I guess the better, well, another question, that's not the better question, but another question on that is, does it matter? You know? I mean, honestly, you could work up an entire painting and not merge anything and just have a million layers everywhere. Uh, it just depends on how you prefer to work and, you know, what the painting calls for, honestly. I think if you did that, it probably... It would probably be detrimental in your efficiency. If you care about that, if you don't care about, you know, being really efficient, just taking your, your time on, on everything, kind of living with it for a long time, then cool, don't have to merge. I find it to be a little bit confusing though. When, for example, you know, because we have this, you know, if I zoom way in, you could see that there's some kind of layering going on here <clears throat> and there's some sharp edges with non-sharp edges. And I could broaden this out with some hairs to make it look like it's not sharp, but the, another way to do that is to erase as well into that sharp edge. And that, that's where I found that I needed to merge as I was trying to figure out, okay, well, where was that sharp edge at? And I had to go down through the layers and figure out, oh, here it is. Let me. Let me do some erasing on that. Yeah, honestly, I, as I'm thinking of it, I don't really feel a need to uh, to merge those layers. Uh, or at least to merge the one overlay layer. I don't think it's a big deal. With art and really all things that you do, a lot of times you can get into this habit of of doing practices that you've done for years that you've just started and you're not sure why. Maybe <clears throat> you just kind of fell into the habit of it. And you never look at the process and question the process. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, lack for a better word, it's kind of like zombie painting where you go in and you do the same thing over and over again. And maybe it does create, you know, um, results that you enjoy and you constantly enjoy. And maybe you're working on a, a deeper aspect of this process. But even then, it's something that you're thinking about, right? You're aware of the process. 
But the importance is to be aware of whatever process that you have. To really kind of think about it and say, oh, what is the process that I have right now? But if you're, if you're just starting out in any aspect of art, I would say um, your, your focus should be building that process. You know, what, if you're asking what process I ha you have and you don't really have any, that's an indication of you just need more um, mileage, more time. Uh, put, in, put in a bit more hours every day. Have some fun more, you know, more days. Change your schedule up so that uh, you can have more time with your art. If it's really important to you, you'll you'll find that time. I have a lot of like tools and tips for scheduling that one day I'm going to share. Um, one day I'd like to share. Uh, so you say it also depends where you want uh, to display your work. No, would ArtStation accept a layered painting? Oh, well, no, um, that's, a, that's actually a good question. So, you know, the export process of this could be completely different than, you know, the, the workup of it. I mean, the, the KRA document, the CRITA document, you would never share with anyone unless you wanted them to actually paint on it or use all the layers, right? The export for other, uh, let's say, you know, it'd be just like social media, I anything on the web would be a JPEG. Now, if you're selling a painting, like a digital painting, I, I still wouldn't even give the CRITA document out, right? Um, you probably, I mean, most of all, you would sell prints. And in that instance, if, if you, you know, I'm not that big where I could sell prints, but this document I think is at 300 DPI, which is the minimum for, let me see, image, can I get image info, image properties? Oh, it's only at 150 PPI. Uh, so that's pixels per inch. DPI is dots per inch, that's for printing. But yeah, if you if I was planning on selling this, it really should have been at 150, and the width and height maybe should have been a lot larger. I'm not sure. But then again, it it all depends on what size it wants you want to release and print it, right? So you can always, um, you know, there's an export within Krita that you can use and you can export it out as, you know, uh, JPEGs, TIFF, you know, these, well, the JPEG's not the highest quality image export. TIFF would be, but a lot of people would have trouble using it, right? Um, and these are flattened files. So it just looks exactly what you have, flattens everything out, and just has a separate file. I mean, honestly, if I wanted to merge everything all into one, yeah, just export as a JPEG, bring that right back into your credit document, and you have a completely, utterly flattened, and just work on top of that. There's always that. Okay. Now let's get some colors in there. Let's get some fun colors in this. I'm going to go right for... So pick the value, that's number one, pick the value, see where it's at on the color wheel. It's hard to see the center sometimes when the color wheel is like this. Um, and then just kind of stay, well actually you can increase the saturation because it's just value, really. Um, I can go all the way over here. And as long as I'm at the same value, that purple is going to look good. Oops, see, if I jump over here it's not going to work. And darn it, I forgot to turn off Google. Pause. Okay, that's paused. As soon as I saved this, Google's like, okay, <laughs> I'll back it up for you and destroy your stream. Let's go with a blue over here. Or, or that teal, I love that. That teal, it just kind of pops in. Look at it right there, it's really nice. Kind of pops in some interest 
get into a lighter gray and then bring it over to a teal. I'm not going to do the teal everywhere, honestly. But what I will do is, is jump into the orange and do the magenta in there. And there's a lot of grays down here. Let's bring some greens into these grays. Would the overlay layer still cause issues, issues if, you, if you export it to JPEG? No, no, it would flatten everything out. It'd be completely flat. So, I mean, if you look on my website, um, oh, I haven't updated my website in a, in a minute, in a bit. Uh, everything on there has been separated layers and everything. You know, the day, the second that I finish this, I do an export into JPEG. I actually have it in a shortcut, control period. So control period, and then I can uh, choose JPEG on here. And then it'll ask me the size and it's, you know, perfect for uh, the web at that point, completely flat. It doesn't show, like if I have my um, resources here, it doesn't show resources. All it shows is what you see, you know, no layers, just completely flat. That was a good question. Thanks for that. Yeah, I want more color down here, more intense color. Oof, I think I changed the value on that as well. Maybe, maybe I picked the wrong spot. I picked in one area and then I put it down in another. Gotta be careful of that. I mean, this is really rough down here. Look at all this. This is just a very rough painting. I think we're good for colors. Now I'm going to switch to this brush and we're going to bring some of this texture down. I can see where we left off because I was working a little bit over here. I can see it's smoother there. It's not so crazy. Definitely everything from here and below and on the right side needs some smoothing out. The texture is just a, <clears throat> a bit too much, uh, and I love texture, but it's it's pulling away from the head of the tiger a bit. It's distracting, and that's what we don't want to do, is distract from the center of interest. And probably the most important areas to look at as far as distracting texture would be any... Um, dark to light value like values like in here where you have a dark value right next to a light value it's going to create some really sharp edges even if it's soft like that's a soft edge it's going to bring a lot more attention to it i think we looked at that in, in the composition um live streams that we went through That's part of the resource and downloads as well. Oh, well, it's part of YouTube. Watch it for free. See, I have to, within these uh, striped areas, I have to be careful with that, with this brush, 
the texture won't look right if I use the bigger size of this brush. Uh, but within these areas where it's just the fur and all these values are pretty close, I can make a larger brush and I can jump in there and smooth things out a little bit. Not too much. And it looks fine. Doesn't look too unnatural. Okay, my, oh, okay. The stream's current bitrate, 3758.68, is lower than the recommended bitrate. I have it set to the recommended bitrate, it's just I'm not sending that up, sorry, YouTube, but you'll have to just deal with it for right, right, right now. This is not the best environment to work in as far as um, painting is concerned. If you want, you know, to get into some deep work, a la Cal Newport in his book, Deep Work, I would suggest not doing his stream. <laughs> But I, I really want to do this, and I think it's great, and I have a lot of fun doing it. So, there we are. But if, you know, if there's a painting I really need to focus on, and I got a couple ideas, well, more than a couple ideas, of paintings, um, I will not do them on a stream. They'll be on the weekend, door closed, phone off, everything off listening to music on noise-canceling headphones with no words and get into the zone. If you want to do your best work, that's how to do it. Your best work is always deep work where, you know, you have extreme focus. We just watched the... We, we rented, actually, from the library the movie Soul by uh, Pixar made it a while ago. And it's about a musician that, a jazz musician that has not really made it, you know? An artist that loves what he does, working at a job that he doesn't quite enjoy, right? Pays the bills, but it's not the jazz that he wants to do, right? Uh, it was a really good movie, but one of the one of the aspects of the movie, which was really interesting, the art style that they used for that movie was was fantastic. Um, it was all about getting into the zone of things, and I forget what they call it. I forget what they called it in the movie. I mean, if you go down the Stephen Kotler route, it's uh, Flow, you know, Mihai Cheek Simihai and his book, uh, Flow. You could, you could call it Flow. You could call it being in the zone. But that time, and actually, you know, now that I think about it, a lot of times it's happened here on the live stream where I'm in the zone. If you ever kind of wake up after painting for a while, not that you're not focused, not that you actually fell asleep, but you've been so deep in it that you look up and all of a sudden like an hour has gone by or 30 minutes. You, you have experienced time dilation. That's flow. That's the zone. And that's where your best work will happen. And there's a lot of things that kind of go into that uh, in order to get to that spot. Uh, number one, 
you have to love what you're doing. You have to be so into it that you enjoy it, that you just love doing it. Like you'd, you'd pay other people to do it kind of thing. You have to love doing it or else you won't be able to focus, you won't get into it. Um, the other thing is, like I said, you got to remove all those distractions. Heck, even Richard Schmidt talks about it in his book, All Prima, which was written like forever ago. Uh, he, he recognizes how important focus is with painting. You know, recognizing times when it's best for you to start a painting. I think specifically he says something like, if, you, if you're like, oh, I really want to start this painting, but... Uh, you know, someone's calling you on the phone, or your 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 significant other needs you, or the cat just puked on the carpet. Probably not the best time to start a painting. If you're tired, it's the middle of the day, and you know that you always get tired in this this time of the day. Not the best time to start a painting. You know, start when you have peak energy, and then you know that presupposes you know what time that is. Okay. That part is done. Let's move our uh, reference. I'm gonna move the reference way out of the way. It's kind of it's too packed in. It's distracting me from what I want to see. Looking really good. Uh, really, really enjoying this so far. Now the next thing I want to do is work with an overlay layer. So we have a lightning, a lighter, lightning, a layer there that lightens up everything. Look at the Christmas tree, tiger beard. It just goes on and off. Uh, honestly, the, the more I look at this, the more I'm thinking, that eh, could be either way. Lighter, darker, lighter, darker. I'm going to leave it off, honestly. I don't think it's such a big change that we really need that overlay layer. It adds some to it. Actually, no, here, I'll leave it on, but what I want to do to it is change up where it's at exactly, because it's dropping down into the body here in too many places. Oh, look at that. I could just erase my entire tiger. I know, I could just turn off my tiger. Um, here's what I'll do. I'll go back to a brush, make sure I'm in the right layer. And then I'm going to erase some of this down here. I want to keep this little bit, because I know that looked pretty good. But not any of this. It's in my shadow. Get out of my shadow. Oh, look at the photo bashing. <laughs> You're such a hack, you photo bashed. Whatever. You didn't work super hard like the uh, the dream of all artists should work. So I'm going to denigrate you for that. Let's erase it within here. I like some of that. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit off of there. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Okay, we're going to do another overlay layer that's going to be on top of that overlay layer. And yeah, we're going to go back to a full screen thing, picker only. And I'm, how am I going to do this? I, what I want to do, eh, I know how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to play around with it. I'm going to darken up the the legs. There's kind of a transition, you know, when we go, when we're going down this way with light, it would never stay the same value as it goes down. It's going to get darker as it goes down. Hmm. 
I didn't change that to an overlay layer. I need to do that. Maybe I'll, I'll keep this up for right now. Overlay. And we want to do a darker color. Yeah, that looks terrible. I hesitate to use a airbrush because sometimes that could smooth things out way too much. That's on overlay, right? Yeah, it is. And what's going to happen here is I'm also hitting the background with this. Well, I'm not hitting the background. It's going over the background in some ways. We're going to take it too far and then try and back it off. Yeah, that, that is definitely too far. What if we just take the opacity down? Forty-seven percent. That's definitely a quicker way to get to the full view, I tell you that. Just tab, hitting tab, we'll do that. I think that's pretty good, honestly. It's on a new layer, I can always change it. What I, I, what I feel like I need is I need to look at the rock right now. Uh, the rock that our tiger is standing on. They are standing on. Not a he or she, I have not defined any kind of pro, uh, pronouns here. Just wanna make that clear. It's interesting how in the animal world, m m the females are the ones that do all the work. In a lot of instances. Okay, not this texture. I hate that one. Look at this. It's like, it's like a super heavy canvas. It's not a rock. What about this one? It could be there. That's the one we used. This is going to get a lot smaller. These texture brushes are not, they don't usually work as well when they're smaller. Um, now this comes directly from David Ravoy. I mean, he created these brushes and he's like, yeah, they really don't uh, do what they need to do when they're smaller. Let's, let's change this to an overlay layer. I've been using overlay a lot. What about multiply? I see no difference. We're in such a darker area of this that I have to even close my uh, tool menu over there. So I can see all of these dark values better. I feel like I need to go full black on this.
I feel like I need to turn the form of the paws a bit more. So I'm gonna head back into my hairbrush. And this value here, we're gonna darken up. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to lose some of these edges here. And you, you think about like these certain forms that it's supposed to have a turn to it like that. It's flat right now, so I'm going to enhance that by not only changing the value from dark to light a bit, but also describing the form with the brush stroke. It's, it's one of my superpower secret things. Describe the form as you paint it, always. It does several things when you do this. It reinforces the shape in your head, this three-dimensional idea in your head, and also um, describes it better within a 2D space. That's good. Now, uh, some of these edges are a bit too sharp. Really gonna blur this out. For me, it's just a little too dark from the shoulders down. That's just me. Well, you're wrong. No, I'm <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, this is, well, let me tell you, there is no wrong anymore in art. There is no right either. There's no right or wrong in art anymore. If you apply right and wrong to anything, that's really probably the only wrong you can have. Um, there's no good, there's no bad, there's no positive, there's no negative. It's, it's all opinions. And how you come at it is correct for you, but it's not universally correct, you know. Um, so yeah, I respect your opinion on that. So too dark from the shoulders down. So when you say shoulders down, you're, you're thinking from, oh, that's too small. You're thinking, oh, well, I can't do that. That's, I'm not even on a brush that makes, I'm on my smudge brush still. Okay, right click, come on, right click, thank you. You're thinking from here and down. You know, I, the one thing, even though I say that there's no right and there's no wrong in art, I think it's important to listen to others' opinions and to really think about it, to really give it the time that it needs, because they might be telling you something that right now you want to kind of throw in the garbage right away. You know, like, oh, you're completely wrong. Or they could be pointing out something that you just haven't seen yet. You haven't hit that level of understanding yet. Too often in my past, being young and ignorant and, or whatever, I have heard opinions and I have disavowed them right away to later figure out that, oh, wow, this person's right. 
No, from where the front legs meet the chest. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Too dark. Like where I darkened up with the uh, airbrush. Well, let's see. I'll go back and forth on it uh, to see. Because um, that's on a different layer. Right here. Of course, that's an extreme change, you know. Okay, so it's at 60% right now. Let's go up to 75. Oh, no, sorry. We have to go the other way. 60% to, let's say, around 30. Okay, back up to 60. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Let go of like a subjective opinion. And hmm, how can I do this? It's probably really small on your screen, so it's, it's going to help. Um, or maybe it's not. Maybe you're watching on your 24 inch pro and it's awesomely huge. I don't know, but let's go back up to 60%. I'm going to hit tab. Uh, tab, thank you. And I want you to squint your eyes. So squinting, what that does is it takes the eyelashes from your bottom of your eyelid and the top eyelid, and it brings them together in kind of like a weave pattern. And it kind of fuzzes out everything, right? And there's a bit more focus on value in that way. And I want you to look at, because I'm doing it right now, I'm squinting and I'm looking at this tiger. And what I see is that everything here, like our center of interest is bright and it's lit up. And that's what I'm focusing on. Like I can't even go down here, like there's nothing there. It's it's like just not there. So I'll leave it, I'll leave it there for a second so you can kind of think about it. And then we're going to change it and then see if that changes. It's all about that focus. Okay, three, two, one. Let's 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 go back to like 30%. And then back into, come on, tab. Why don't you wanna tab sometimes? There. Okay, now I'm squinting. And, and I'll say, you know, I will admit, I mean, there's still focus up here, but there's a little bit more focus down here as well. Is it enough to destroy the whole composition? Probably not. What do you see, thinker? It just seems there should be more ambient light. I think it gives the eye other places to go. Yeah, it definitely does. Here's what I want to think about on this. Given all that I know about oil painting, because I feel like right now that I'm looking at it, I could go either way. So the deciding factor for me is which value is going to make my life easier when I oil paint. And honestly, the lighter value would do that. 
When you're painting in oil, brighter paintings are easier. The, the problem is, is I don't like brighter paintings. <laughs> I like, I like contrast. Actually, I've done a lot of bright paintings, but, um, I like the really high contrast and things. So that's why I'm always going for it. But I think you're fine. I think we're good with 30 or 60% on that. Um, if you, if you said, oh no, it needs to go even lighter than that. I'll disagree. Uh, no, I think this is, is as light as we need to be on that. Uh, I, I don't think we want, okay. I don't think we want, um, the viewer's eye to go in too many places, honestly. One thing I was thinking of is I like this nice little kind of stripe of like kind of divot in the fur here that I see on our reference on the right. Just a, I'm gonna make sure I get the I want to get the, the placement of it correct. Wow, uh, okay, I'm painting on the wrong layer, no wonder. There, now it'll be like super dark, yep. Just a hint of it. All right, here we are. One hour into it. Yeah. I accomplished exactly what I wanted to accomplish today. And I, I think I'm even done with the rock. I think the rock is good the way it is. I don't want to mess with that any any longer. Uh, that's done. The tomorrow, uh, during the li the next live stream, which will be at the same time. Oh, there's my, my watch telling me it's 5.30. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to work on this, the body, the, the, yeah, the entire body. Good. I'm glad you like it. Thank you, Thinker. Thanks for your input. Always enjoy your input. So we're going to work on the body. Hopefully we can get uh, most, if not all, the body done tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem to get most of that done. If we don't get that done, because we have the whole tail and everything, we'll probably have, you know, Thursday, Friday for the body, and then Saturday for the palm frond. At the bottom right. Yeah. And then next week, I mean, if we do that, next week it's going to be traditional. We're going to start this painting from the frickin' beginning. Fantastic. And then an oil. I'm, I'm so excited about that. So, but there's going to be a day off in between that transition because one of the days is going to be me just figuring out um, how to make that happen. Because I'm going to have to have... Actually, it'll, it'll be a slow transition, honestly. Because the first live stream is going to be all about the setup. It's going to be about the drawing, um, about the transition that I make from digital to traditional uh so it could start out in traditional or to digital like uh getting a grid set up in krita um, and then it'll be all about the drawing maybe the first few and i only need one camera for that uh, but whenever i put brush to canvas 
or need to put paint on the canvas. I need to have two cameras set up. And you guys don't care about this. You're just like, dude, just get to it. Show the stream. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, no, I need to show the palette. Actually, there's going to be three things showing. Just like, um, you, know, you know, here's a perfect segue. It's going to be just like uh, my gum road. So if you go to my gum road and oh, new thing up, how to paint noses in oil, how to paint eyes in oil. If you look at these tutorials and I have a preview for these, you'll see my setup. Okay. Okay. Am I not showing the setup for this? So here's the drawing setup. See, I show the image with, you know, me drawing from it. And then do I show a painting setup? There we go. So I have the painting on the left, I have my palette here, and then I have the reference as well. It's going to be a little bit hard to get all that into the frame. Um, pro what's what's going to happen because, uh, as you can see here, even on this 8x10, I'm working on one section. So I've zoomed in to that section uh, on the painting as well as on the eye itself, on the reference, and working it up that way. So, and, and I move down as I go. So each, each live stream that we have with this, it will be um, in these kind of sections. Yeah. That's uh, traditional and digital guys. Check out the link in the description below. If you want 50% off this $10, use the code CB50 off for five bucks. It continues to grow. That was day 50. That'll be uploaded soon. Actually be uploaded next Sunday or so. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a wonderful day. And uh, I will see you tomorrow.